Now, whether you're a Lightroom Pro or you're a novice user, you've probably heard of the masking tools before, and you may know that they are some of the most powerful tools that Lightroom has to offer. They can help you transform your images from this to this, or even from this to this. In this week's video, we are going to be covering a couple of my favorite techniques to use in Lightroom's masking tools. One of the most challenging parts of using these masking tools is actually just knowing what to do with them. It's obvious to do things like increase exposure or drop the highlights or increase the shadows in a certain area, but doing more advanced things a lot of times people just simply don't know what to do. So in this video, I'm going to show you three different techniques that I use on a lot of my images that helps me to really transform those images and to make them look really, really great. Let's go ahead and jump right in there. I don't want to waste any time. First image that we're looking at is this one here. Now, the first thing that I want to show you is how to create a custom vignette using this tool. This is something I use on literally every image. And if you're someone that doesn't like vignettes, um, stay tuned because let me try and convince you why this is good. So typically to make a vignette, a lot of people would just come in here. They would scroll down to effects. This is not in the masking tools. This is just in the regular um, sliders here. They would drop that amount and then maybe they would tweak the settings a little bit. And, you know, this doesn't really provide you great results because the problem is it's giving you an equal darken across the whole image. You know, even over here where the light's coming in, you can see it's darkening, which wouldn't make sense. This shouldn't be getting darkened right here. So instead of using that, we're going to use our masking tool. Super, super easy to use. We're going to uh, select here. If you don't know how to use the masking tool, I'll link a video here that will show you how to use them. You're going to want to know how to use them. I'm going to assume if you're watching this video, you at least have a rough understanding. You don't need to know how to do anything in advance, but just a rough understanding of how it works. So we'll click create a new mask. We are going to create a radial gradient. We will click and drag from the center. Now you're going to want to adjust this mask to fit your image. Otherwise, you're doing just the same thing that the vignette slider is doing. So for me, I might want to adjust the feather a little bit to make it affect more or less of the image. And then I also want to drag this out. Now, if I want to drag it out and around, you can see I can't quite access the sides. Normally, I would click Command minus on Mac or Control minus on PC. For some reason, my Lightroom is bugged right now. So we will just go to View, Zoom Out, and I'm going to select this a few times. Now you can see it's a little bit smaller. Now, in this image, I want to darken the top and the bottom, but not so much on the sides, especially not on this left side. So I'm just going to drag this out like that. Drag this over just like that and keep adjusting the settings here. It's mostly all going to be feather and exposure. Um, you can go back up to zoom in a couple times if you want to see the image a little closer and just fine tune this for whatever image you are working with. Now you can see I'm not darkening the brighter spots, but I am darkening the top and bottom of the image. Now you can do the exact opposite here with this vignette. I like to go in and add Another radial gradient, click and drag from the center, just like that, increase the feather. And I like to increase the exposure, so I'm actually brightening the middle. So now not only am I darkening the outside, but I'm brightening the middle of the image, so it's like I'm doing the opposite of the vignette. So now you can see these two, turn those off and back on, just like that. We've done quite a bit to this image with just a small little adjustment there. So that is how you do a little vignette with the masking tool. Okay, next I'm gonna show you how to make the light pop. There's a couple different ways to do this. I'll show you both really briefly. We're gonna create a new mask. We're first gonna to try to use luminance range. This makes a selection based on the lightness values of the pixels in your image. I'm gonna select here because these are the bright pixels that I want to be selected. Then I'm going to refine this mask just a little bit. I'm going to close that down as much as I can, somewhere about in there. Now you can increase the exposure, or I would recommend increasing the whites and maybe decreasing the shadows. I think that's going to give you the best results. You can see just like that, we've made it pop a little bit, and it's not too much, but it is enough that it's noticeable kind of gives my image a little bit of pop there. Now, if that doesn't work well on your image, that's not my favorite way to do it, but that is one way. I will show you the secondary way, which is by combining multiple masks. So we're gonna create a new mask. We are going to select sky. This should select the sky pretty well. You can see it does a good job there. Then we are going to create a new mask here, and we're going to subtract, and we're gonna do radial gradient. We're going to draw this in the sky like that, and we are going to invert this radial gradient. 
Now you can see we're making a selection here of only in the sky and we're using this radial gradient, which is exactly what we want to do. Now if we go back, if we uncheck show overlay, go back to our image and we punch the whites, you can see that gives my image a little bit of glow there, which is really, really nice. I'm liking what that's doing a lot. A lot of times I'll drop the highlights and increase the whites. I might increase the exposure, something just like that. So super easy to create that mask. And then I can always go in here and adjust my radial gradient to kind of set this in a different spot. I can decrease the feather, increase the feather, whatever I want to do to really make this fit the image just right. Super, super easy to do that. Then I could come in just like I did on the last image. Same thing, radial gradient. And we will go ahead and just throw this vignette on. We will invert this. Drop a little vignette. And you can see our image is already looking really nice. So just a couple quick changes there. Just that vignette and that glow in the center. And we've added a lot of dynamic range to our image, added a lot of visual interest. So that's looking pretty good. Now let's look at one more image where we're gonna do one more thing. On this one, I'm going to make our subject stand out a little bit, and then we're gonna build on it with all of the other techniques that we just talked about. So to add to this particular subject, um, what we're actually going to do is we are going to select subject. Actually, let's do a select sky first and see how that does. You can see it's done a nice job selecting that background there. And then I want to do subtract and select subject. You can see that will subtract the moose. It does a pretty good job. It might not even be necessary, but we're just going to go ahead and leave it. If I was doing this for real, not just for a YouTube video, I'd probably go in and touch up this and make this look really, really nice, but I don't wanna waste your time talking about that today. I'm gonna to show you kind of how to add light and to kind of make the subject um, separate from the background because it kind of blends in a little bit too much right now. I really want the subject to stand out more. So we are going to increase the exposure, increase the whites, decrease the highlights, Scroll down here, we are going to decrease the clarity. This almost adds a little bit of blur to the background. We're not gonna mess with the dehaze. Sometimes I like playing with it, but a lot of times it just kind of removes too much color from the image. Um, so we'll bring that back. Come up here, you can make a few more tweaks if you want, but you can see just by kind of brightening that, it kind of helps to separate the moose from the background. Now, additionally, what you can do, um, I'm going to duplicate this whole mask, and then I'm gonna reset all the settings here, and just like that. Now, I wanna do one more thing on the mask, and what I wanna do is actually subtract, and I want to do linear or radial gradient, it's up to you. Draw that in, I'm gonna invert it, just like we did before, now we kind of have some linear light coming into the scene, which is perfect. I want it to be a little bit stronger at the top. I want this to be really feathered. And I, the reason why you can see it sideways is because I'm trying to make this appear like it's actually real light. You know, I, it doesn't need to be straight down. I want it to be a little bit directional. Then I can come in here and I can boost the exposure. I might go back and decrease some of what I did in the first one, just drop the amount a little bit. I'll go back to the second one here. And now you can see, you know, you can tweak the so many different settings here to kind of add a little bit of glow in this image, but you can see that's really given me this feeling of light behind the image. Now we can do the same thing that we did to previous images here, and we'll go in radial gradient once again and we will throw a little vignette on here. Now again, because we wanna shape the light, we don't want to, we wanna invert this also, um, but we don't wanna apply this darken to the top too heavily. You can see we're really darkening the top just like that. And I don't wanna be darkening the top, so what I can do is subtract linear gradient, click and drag that down. Now we are not selecting the top. You can see this is kinda of what our mask looks like which is a lot more like it. Then I'm gonna create one more new mask. We are going to grab a radial gradient 
and we're just going to brighten the center of the image just a touch, just like that. So just with these few masks, you can see we've really transformed uh, the light in this image. It's so, so easy to do with just a few of these masking adjustments. These are some of my favorite effects that I like to apply to my images. Hopefully that makes sense. I really enjoy applying these to add some creative effects to my photos. I'm using uh, one or all of these on most of my images these days. And so I think this will help you to create some great images yourself. I'll also throw a link to my masking video if you need to see how to use the masking tools more in depth. I know this video moved really quickly. This is assuming that you already know how to use the masking tools. So again, if you don't, I apologize, but do check out that video and then come back to this one. Um, I think there's a lot of really helpful stuff for you to learn here. Otherwise, thank you guys so much for watching. Please make sure to leave a like and subscribe to help me to continue to grow my channel. I will help you to continue to grow as a photographer in return. Otherwise, my name is Austin James Jackson. We'll see you guys next time.